Now throughout NFL history, there's actually been plenty of celebrities that joined the league alongside the best players in the world. Now Terry Crews is most known for his acting roles in best-selling films like White Chicks, Friday After the Next, The Expendable series, and ironically the hilarious football movie Longest Yard. And he's definitely been a familiar face in many TV shows as well, but you may not have known, he actually spent some time in the NFL. While playing in high school, Crews earned a full athletic scholarship to Western Michigan University, and as a defensive end for the college's Broncos, Crews earned himself all-conference honors and won the 1988 Mid-American Conference championship. And this eventually led to Terry being drafted by the Los Angeles Rams in the 11th round of the 1991 NFL Draft. The 6'2", 245-pound lineman at the time appeared in 32 games in the NFL while playing for the Rams, Redskins, Chargers, and Eagles. Throughout his run, Cruz racked up 57 tackles and 39 assists over the course of the games he played. But while playing the game of football, Terry Cruz even took some time to play on the NFL Europe team, the Rain Fire, which was based out of Germany. Now primarily being a part of the special teams, Cruz didn't make any huge NFL guaranteed money like athletes do nowadays. In 1997, after being released by the Eagles, Cruz went on to try out for the 49ers, and that day ended up changing his career path forever. He recently talked about it on the show Hot Ones, where Cruz went on to say, I gotta try out with the 49ers, and they treated me so bad. They treated me like I was dirty. He was working me out like he was mad he had to be there. It was just a psychological mess. I was a little farther out away from him than I am with you, and he threw the ball at me, and I put my hands up, and boom, my finger was like an L. It totally went sideways. And I snapped it back, and I was like, man, what the? What are you doing? And he was like, come on, man, come on. Let's get the workout going. I was like, I'm done. And I remember coming home to my wife, and I said, never again, never again. I was so done. Also during an interview with Hot 97, Cruz went on to say, my biggest thing is I got to go back and tell players and give them a perspective. I'm like, guys, guys, football is a very, very small part of your life. What happens is you're tricked. That carrot is always dangled. The magic thing is th they dangle this carrot and you're jumping for it and jumping for it because they tell you it's the biggest thing in the whole world. When I retired, I thought my life was over because I said, nobody's gonna hire me. This is all I wanted to do, I'm done. Again, I was a special teamer. So I topped out at about $300,000. That went very quickly, so I was broke, okay? But the deal was that I had success afterwards as an actor. Now before coming one of the most dominant wrestlers that we all know today, Goldberg was incredible on the gridiron. From playing at a local high school in Tulsa, Goldberg used his skill set well, and it earned him a scholarship to the University of Georgia, where he really began making a name in football. After becoming a Bulldog, Goldberg would go on to play all four years as a defensive lineman. And after playing those four years, Goldberg earned his right to be a part of the Junkyard Dog Club for being one of the top defensive players all four seasons. Because of this, Goldberg went on to be drafted by the Los Angeles Angeles Rams as well in the 11th round of the 1990 NFL Draft. Goldberg went to the team's training camps, but he was cut before the start of the season. After that, he would spend the next two years playing inside the World League of American Football alongside the Sacramento Surge until finally he would get a shot to play in the NFL again with the Atlanta Falcons. He did actually play alongside one of the best defensive backs ever seen with Deion Sanders, but only amounted 11 tackles in three seasons. Eventually in 1994, he was cut by Atlanta, but the following year, the Carolina Panthers picked him up in the 1995 expansion draft. But an injury kept him sidelined once again. Interestingly enough, he was one of the first players to have been cut by the Panthers, and Goldberg's NFL career ended when he tore his lower abdomen off of his pelvis. His dream was playing professional football, so, so obviously he had hopes of returning to the league after rehab, but due to his lack of success in the league up to that point, he wasn't considered a major asset to teams moving forward. And after a short time in the league, Goldberg described playing NFL as a mixed emotional experience because despite reaching the goal of playing in the NFL, he didn't accomplish what he desired in the league. When talking about his past, WWE ended up sitting down with Goldberg during an interview where he addressed football. At first, he went on to say, it was a dream come true. The only thing I ever aspired to be was a professional football player. I wanted to follow my brother's footsteps. I wanted to be someone that people could look up to and kids could call a superhero, man. I wanted to be the best at what I did and football was my thing, always. Then later in the interview, Goldberg went on to say, I was practically born with the football helmet on. I went to all my brother's games as a child. Football was all I knew. Everything I did was toward that ultimate goal, to get that opportunity in the NFL. It was an indescribable feeling to accomplish a goal like that. I just wish I could have retired as a 15 year all pro. I was very lucky to have this opportunity to play as long as I did. At the end of the day, to play at the Falcons, those are some great guys and great memories. And towards the end of the interview, Goldberg was asked about his time with the Atlanta Falcons. And he went on to state, my football career in a short synopsis was that I had to fight to stay afloat. I was smaller, so I had to be tenacious. I had to be smarter than the next guy. I had to try harder. Be the first guy to show up, you know? I had to do everything right. It was a tough journey just to get that opportunity. Now, he eventually went on to be a very successful wrestler, a legend at that, and ironically made an appearance in the iconic football movie The Longest Yard as well. Now, aside from being one of the greatest wrestlers in WWE history, Stone Cold Steve Austin had numerous passions. From being a WWE champion to having an actual career, there's nothing Austin couldn't do, and just like every other boy from Texas, his first passion was football. With him being born in Austin, Texas, it was definitely a long shot. 
lot, but once his parents divorced, he was forced to move to Edna, Texas. Staying in Edna and finishing his schooling from Edna High School, Austin got a football scholarship at Wharton County Junior College, followed by a full scholarship at the University of North Texas. But injuries ended up plaguing his football career at this point, which is exactly why he went the wrestling entertainment route. But recently, Stone Cold addressed some of the issues with the Cowboys back in 2015 and said he wanted to come join this team. In an interview, Stone Cold said, I'll tell you what, I got some time on my hands. I could be there Sunday playing the Philadelphia Eagles. I think I can line them up. Throw them for about three, 400 yards, get Jason Witten open, get Des Bryant working, a lot of underneath routes, get Darren McFadden the ball a few times, maybe do a little in the round, fake the reverse pitch out. Let me run downfield and Derek could throw me the ball. About 60 yards out, catch it full stride and boom, spike it over the damn goalpost. Y'all saw me catch all those beers all those years? Damn near never dropped any of them. You know how much money I could have made playing professional football as a tight end? But I can't jump and I can't run fast. That was my problem. Now we have yet another legendary actor, Burt Reynolds, who also had a promising football career. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2018 at the age of 82, but Reynolds was one of Hollywood's top leading actors in the 1970s, starring in films like The Longest Yard, Dukes of Hazard, and was known worldwide for his Smokey and the Bandit series. Reynolds would definitely be remembered for his contribution to film, though he also had a pretty significant impact on the sports world. World. Before becoming a Hollywood star, his first passion in life was football. Being born in Lansing, Michigan, there was nothing you could participate in besides football. Located in a rural farm country, young men knew that the only way to get out of town would be to acquire a football scholarship, and Burt succeeded. After graduating from high school, Reynolds earned a football scholarship to Florida State University as a running back. In his first season, Reynolds ran for 134 yards and two touchdowns on 16 carries. He also reeled in four catches for 76 yards. Reynolds showed everyone that he was a force to be reckoned with, but at the beginning of his sophomore year, he suffered a major injury. During his first game, Reynolds would suffer a knee injury that would keep him out of action for a while. But just when he was able to come back, Reynolds would then be a part of a car accident. The accident would re-aggravate his knee injury and Reynolds would lose his spleen. And that stretch of bad luck kept him off the field for two years before a short-lived return. The injuries ultimately brought his football dreams crashing down, but it worked out somewhat as he would turn his acting career into something that we all know today. In an interview with Business Insider, Reynolds went on to talk about not playing football again by saying, my dad probably took it harder than I did. He was crushed. But in the movie, the Longest Yard, Reynolds' role in that movie was being a former NFL player who goes to prison and ends up recruiting a group of inmates to play a showdown game against their guards. And he played as the coach, so, so in a way, his dream was accomplished. Now, with Nate Robinson being one of the smallest NBA players ever, listed at 5'9", he did many impressive things to prove that being short is just a trait. He has a respectable NBA career being a legendary dunker like few before him, but he also attempted making the NFL. Robinson enrolled to attend Washington on a football scholarship, where he played all 13 football games in 2002, and he started the final six games as a cornerback. But Nate eventually decided to concentrate on basketball after this lone season of football, and during his freshman year in his basketball season at Washington, he led the team in scoring with 13 points per game, and his sophomore season, Robinson was named to the all Pac-10 first team after he led the team and ranked 13th among Pac-10 scorers with 13.2 points per game. In April of 2005, Robinson declared for the NBA draft, foregoing his final year of college eligibility, and he was selected by the Phoenix Suns, but was traded to the New York Knicks. And ever since Nate grew up in Seattle, his favorite team in the NFL was of course the Seahawks, who actually allowed Nate to come to an open tryout in 2016. A Seahawks coach, Pete Carroll, talked highly about him after the workout, and even talked about Nate's chances of making it to the NFL, saying, I think it's all but impossible. It's as hard as you could possibly get. He's 32 as well. I don't know if anybody could do it, but if anyone could, it might be Nate. He's that versatile as an athlete and a great competitor. He looks really quick, caught the ball really well. He's an amazing athlete. He's got a lot of work to do. He's getting ready for whatever comes next and hoops as well. He's trying to figure out what he's going to do and whether he's gonna be in the NBA or overseas playing or whatever. So football is an option that he wants to investigate. He's a great kid and I've known him for a long time, way back when, and we always loved the kid. Excited to give him a chance to see where this all fits together for him. And we'll find out later down the road. Now last, but definitely not least, we all know Dwayne Johnson would be one of the highest paid actors in the last decade, from being part of some of the biggest films like Fast and the Furious, Jumanji, and more, even participating in the HBO series Ballers, there's nothing that The Rock can't do. His family has been a part of the WWE his whole life, but The Rock had different plans growing up, being passionate about football. Before The Rock made his name as the hardest working man in Hollywood, and becoming the most electrifying man in sports entertainment, he was crushing people on the gridiron for the Miami Hurricanes. Johnson played on the defensive line, and he was a part of the 1991 squad that won the national title. This team also included future Pro Football Hall of Fame player Warren Sapp. In 1991, Johnson played as a freshman and established himself. He nearly started that year, and things looked promising for a sophomore year, until Warren Sapp made his presence 
presence known. During an interview, Sapp went on to say, I went down and sat down in the D-lineman room. And Dwayne Johnson walks in and says, what are you doing here? I looked at him and said, I'm here for your job. The Rock ended up on the Dan Patrick show later and he talked about the situation saying, like true defensive linemen would do, full of ego, especially down in Miami because we all talk trash. I said, well, you ain't taking my spot. And about six months later, he took my spot. After this happened, Johnson declared for the 1995 NFL Draft, but he went undrafted. The Rock ended up suffering multiple injuries before finally making the decision that he wasn't going to be a professional football player. But what shocked everyone is the fact that he didn't blame the injuries on why he didn't make it to the NFL. He said Warren Sapp was the reason he chose a different career path. And during a roundtable interview with ESPN, The Rock would go into detail on this saying, yeah, the thing was, I had the greatest D lineman in the history of the game playing in front of me. Number 99, number one in your heart. I gotta tell you this, people are always asking me if I regret not making it to the NFL because of my injuries at Miami. Let me be clear, it had nothing to do with my injuries. I didn't make it to the NFL because of one man. That's Warren Sapp, hands down. There's a reason I'm here right now. It's because of the grace of God, because you're the best at what you do and because you came in and said, you go settle the sidelines real quick and I'm gonna go out there and kick some ass. You know, I could have went pro if it wasn't for my bum knee, but thankfully I'm here making videos for your entertainment. And trust me, bro, don't wanna miss out on this video on the screen right here. So just go ahead and click on it, dog. Just go ahead and click on it, man. It's a fire video, bro. Trust me, 